The story was submitted by Drake Simmons. He said, this story was told in my family about my great granddaddy, Isaiah. He said, it always made me sad, but it also kind of filled my heart up. So I wanted to share this with you and the kinfolk. He said, it's a heartwarming, touching story, but it's also one about an unlikely hero. Drake says, it goes back to the olden days in Alabama. He said, my great granddaddy Isaiah was always extremely shy and bashful. He said, I mean, Lord have mercy. They said if a gal was to be around, <laughs> he'd just freeze right up. He said, he used to go to an old barn dances and stuff with his brothers and things, but would usually just end up standing over in the corner or sitting somewhere and watching. Said his brothers used to tease him quite a bit. Said one of them told him, said one of these days he was gonna get him a gal that drag all that shyness out of him. Well, as they got older, his brothers all got married, had families, moved off. Isaiah, he stayed right there and stayed the same old Isaiah. Whenever their parents passed away, all they had was the house and land, except for his grandparents' old house that was falling in and set across the field they owned. Said his daddy had always been a sharecropper. Said Isaiah, said, he didn't want to do no sharecropping. Said he just wanted a simple life. Said he knew the land, the mountains, so he figured he'd be all right. Well, one evening, he was studying his Bible by the light of an old oil lamp. Something caught his eye and he looked up and he spotted something, a very dim light. And it was coming from the window of his grandparents' old house across the field. Well, nervous as a jackrabbit, said he grabbed his daddy's old shotgun. Said he eased across the field there, eased up to the window. And with every ounce of courage he could possibly muster, he yelled, Come out of there now, you're on my land. I said the front door slowly swung open. And a woman and a young'un come out scared half to death. Said he made big eyes and said, Ma'am, who are you and why are you in there? Said she was a crying, said, I'm so sorry, mister. Said, my husband passed away two years ago. And where we're from, said things just got real bad for us, so we run. Said we prayed and prayed for Jesus to guide us. And he guided us here. She said, I'm so sorry, mister, we'll be on our way. So he got to looking and could see bruises and stuff on him. She said, No, ma'am. He said, It's all right. You are safe here with me. I said, you right. The good Lord guided you and he guided you right. She, you know, she kindly smiled. Well, see, he told us, I'll be right back. So he run back across the field, towed it back some blankets, and an oil lamp, things like that over there to him. He said, we'll talk more in the morning. He said, she thanked him with a smile and wiping tears. So he just kindly smiled and said, just get some rest. And the next morning, first thing, he goes over there. And he invited him over to his house. He introduced himself. She said that her name was Luberta, but everybody called her Lou. Her son, who looked to be around eight at the time, his name was Earl. Said they walked in, said she stopped looking around, said, Ain't you got no wife? Said he kind of grinned real bashful like, said, no, ma'am. Said the place was a wreck. She said, you want me to fix you a mouthful to eat? He said, ma'am, said, 
If a new one mine, you can fix us. A mouthful to eat. You're just welcome to eat with me. I said, he looked down, said, Lord Earl, said he was a grinning. Said he liked that idea. Well, I said she laughed, got to looking around, found an old towel, throw it over her shoulder, found an apron, put it on, run them out off on the porch. So that way she commenced. <laughs> I said they got out there on that porch. The little Earl was sitting there looking up at Isaiah like he was studying him, you know. Isaiah being, you know, kind of shy, and so he was just kind of making big eyes at him, said, Something on your mind? So the little Earl looked up at him and said, Why ain't you got no wife? Something wrong with you? So Isaiah said, No, no, there ain't nothing wrong with me. So Earl looked at him and said, You sure? You look like you might have the pox or something. Isaiah said, he kind of laughed and said, No, no, I don't reckon I got no pox. Said so Earl looked around and said, I know. It's cause you ain't got no dog. Yes, sir, that's it. Everybody knows that every daddy and husband can't get married unless they got a good dog. Isaiah said, Is that right? Well, I expect I best get me a dog in. Cyril looked at him up and down, kind of shook his head, said, You might ought to get two. <laughs> well, as time went on, Isaiah and Lou become really close. Poor old Isaiah, he wanted to ask Lou to be his wife more times than he could count. But every time he'd start to ask her, he'd freeze right up. Poor old Lou, bless her heart, she was mighty fond of him too, but whenever he'd freeze up, it'd just disappoint her something awful. Now Lou and Earl stayed in the other house across the field at night, but they'd all stay gathered up and stuff over at his house during the day. Well, one time when Earl was around 11, Isaiah told Lou he was going to take Earl hunting. Well, she said he had never been hunting for her and weren't fond of the idea. He said, well, he said, it's mighty important that he learns how to hunt. So she agreed after he said, I tell you what, till he learns how to respect and treat and everything, a hunting rifle or shotgun and things, he'd just let him use the shells with old rock salt in it. And he'd make her a promise. He weren't to touch it, unless Isaiah was with him. So again, you know, she agreed to that. Well, he showed Earl how to hunt, fish, and told him you know, how to respect no shotgun stuff. He also told him that no shotgun, you didn't really have to aim, just point. Well, he set him up some old tin cans, and had Earl shoot him. Well, after Earl hit a couple of them, and Isaiah, he patted him on the back and said, Oh, Earl, said, now, now you're a bona fide hunter. Said Earl grinned, stood tall, and puffed his little chest out, and said, Bona fide. Isaiah said, Yes, sir, bona fide. Said Earl said, What's that mean? He said, Well, that means official. That means you, you know, you're official hunter. Earl grinned and again said, Bone of Fire. Another time they was out in the yard planting flowers. Well, when they heard horses a coming. So they looked up and seen some men riding up. They were dressed like cowboys and had badges on them. So said them men rode up. And said they showed them a wanted poster and asked them if they'd seen the man that was on it. Said he was from Texas and was wanted for armed robbery. And said that they knowed he was in the area and they was looking for him. Well, they said that they hadn't seen him. Well, I said they asked about the other house across the field. And he said, ah, it's just an old run down house that he you know, belonged to his grandparents. And said they asked if they could go look inside. 
and he agreed. But Isaiah also noticed one man with him, with a scar, who kept looking at Lou. So Isaiah grabbed Lou and kind of eased her back behind him. Well, they rode over to the house, looked at it, didn't find anything. They come back, and he told Lou and Earl to get inside. They told him, said, they was gonna hold up just down the road a piece. And if they seen that man on the poster, they'd get down there fast as they could and let him know. Well, Isaiah said they would. He said they tipped their hats and left. But Isaiah noticed the man with the scar kept looking around. That he figured he was looking around because he didn't see Lou. Well, said they left. Isaiah went back inside and locked the door. Said it best they stay inside the rest of the evening. Well, that night, way up in the night, said they come knock at the door. Said Isaiah told Earl to go hide and asked who it was. And all he got was law man. Said he eased the door open, and it was the man with the scar. He said, well, he said, I need to look around. I gotta come in and look around, and make sure that old criminal ain't in here. Huh? Said against his better judgment, said Isaiah let him in. Said he come in, said he grinned, told Isaiah to wait outside. Said Lou could stay in there with him and show him around. I said Lou kind of started crying. Isaiah kind of pushed her behind him again. Said, No, sir, we stay together. I said that man patted his side iron. Said, I won't nobody miss you, so best do what I say. Again, scared half to death, Isaiah stood tall and said, No, sir. I said, Where's that older law man that was here? I want to talk to him. Said the old man with scar said, Ah, he's busy. He ain't got time to fool with you. Said, Come on now. Said Isaiah told him, said, I told you no, and I ain't gonna tell you no again. Said you can hurry up and look or get on out of my house. Said the old fella kind of grinned a little bit and said, Well, you made me do this. Said he started to draw his side iron when BOOM! Said that man sitting there looking at him with a scar there, said he just made eyes so big. Said they was big as saucers. Said he screamed off of his lungs, it sounded like a woman. Said he turned and shot out that door like a scalded dog. Said as he turned to run, they saw Earl behind him on the floor, grinning from ear to ear, holding that old shotgun where that shotgun had kicked him plumb off his feet. See, Earl had filled that feller's hind end with his rock salt. <laughs> said Earl stood up, dusting his britches off and everything, said grinned ear to ear and said, bone of fire. <laughs> well, Isaiah, Lou, and Earl hid out in the edge of the wood line for the rest of the night. Now they figured that old fella would be back for revenge. But, after they prayed and begged the Lord to keep them safe, they never come back. I reckon that fella was probably too embarrassed to explain what happened. But after that, old Isaiah, he finally worked up the nerve to ask Lou to marry him. She said yeah, and they got married at the local little church. Said they lived a long, happy, healthy life after that, and ended up having five youngins together. Said little old Earl growed up to be a mighty good fella too. Said he always looked after his siblings. Said always there for them when they needed him. Said Earl even taught all his little brothers how to hunt. Said every time they'd do a good job, he'd pat them on the back and tell them they was bone of fire.